I'm Jeff Philbin and this is Dinner Diaz. Great food from great chefs and today we're making the perfect pasta as we use bolognese two ways. Layering into a lasagna and as a sauce for fettuccine. Bon appetito! Joining me in the kitchen today is Chef Matthew Zappoli. Not just because he has an Italian name, though it does help, he's also the creative culinary director for Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino here in Tampa, overseeing all of their 14 restaurants. You got 14 restaurants? 14, yes. Awesome. Today, he's bringing us back to the basics to show us how to make the best bolognese sauce and how to make it into lasagna or serve up with fettuccine. So where do we start? Well, the Place we start is obviously with good quality ingredients. Mm -hmm. So for this recipe, we got a combination of beef, veal, and pork, um, which we the grind. Trifecta. Yeah, the, the trifecta for good Italian cooking. Okay. And, um, you know, again, we're going to have some nice uh, fresh, well, I shouldn't say fresh, but Italian imported tomatoes, which we puree up. So that's the start. And we want to get our pan nice and hot. Okay. So we'll just crank that up there. And um, the reason that I selected this dish today is because, you know, when I think of cooking at home specifically, I always go back to Italian food because mm -hmm. that's what I know. That's what I grew up on. And this uh, preparation is so versatile. You know, this, this bolognese sauce, you know, we're going to show a couple different ways to utilize it today. But if you go to Bologna, you know, you're going to find pretty much this exact sauce also served with their famous Tortellini. To start this, we want a nice hot pan. Meat's going to go in. Okay. And again, we're using a combination of beef, veal, and pork. If you, you know, can't find veal or can't eat pork, you can go straight beef. Okay. So we're just going to keep breaking that meat up. I added a little bit of salt. I'm going to add a little bit of pepper. And then once this gets to the point where, you know, the meat's fully cooked, which is probably about another minute from now, mm -hmm. then we'll add our vegetables. And to get Chef Matthew's recipes for this bolognese, head over to our website, dinnerdias.com. That square, that's the best way to get to us, it's our QR code, which that means just get your phone out, point the camera at it, and a link is going to pop up and take you straight to the website. All right, so at this point, you can see the meat's cooked. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a little bit of fat that's come out of the meat. There's a little bit of water that's come out of the meat. When we do it at the restaurant, we're doing, you know, 60, 70, 80 pounds of meat at the time. And at this point, we would drain off some of sure. that fat. But for this recipe, because it's a smaller amount of meat, we could actually use that fat and that liquid to sweat the vegetables. Oh, fantastic. So the vegetables go in. And what is right now for our vegetables? What are we adding? It's pretty much a standard mirepoix. Carrots, okay. onion, celery, and a little bit of garlic mm -hmm. that's chopped up in there. And that's kind of like your uh, Italian, you know, trinity base, if you will, for the sauce. And we just want to get those vegetables cooked. And that's really all you're looking for. And right at this point, then we're going to turn this up just a touch. Now we're gonna drink. We're gonna we're gonna put it in. What are we doing here now? If, if I see the if, bottle of wine and I'm I'm kind of like you know, do I get the straws out? What do we do? If you're at home, you're pouring a glass. <laughs> That's exactly it. And you're also putting a little in your bolognese sauce. I love it. <laughs> You gotta drink what you're gonna eat. Yeah, that's it. And that's why we're using a bottle of wine that we would actually drink. Perfect. Not just, you know. And these are this is gonna be a wine from the restaurant. So tell us a little bit about the restaurant. Cipresso is the restaurant that, that um, actually serves this dish. Okay. We do have the fettuccine bolognese on the menu seven days a week. The lasagna bolognese is on the menu Friday. It's a special every Friday. Um, the restaurant itself, it uh, opened up in October of 2019, so coming up on four years this year old. And um, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a modern Italian restaurant with a more traditional soul, if you will. And it looks like it, because what are we looking right here on the screen then? Because this looks very much like it would be a staple in an Italian restaurant, but it looks very refined. What, what are we looking at? That is one of our newer dishes that's going to be going on the menu uh, very, very soon. 
And that is our main lobster ravioli. So it's, it's a lobster ravioli. It's, it's made with fresh main lobster. We don't use frozen or nice. anything like that. We, we buy fresh lobsters, we cook them, we break them down, we chop them up. Fresh pasta dough, we roll it out ourselves, and then we serve it with a cognac lobster reduction oh, come sauce. Come on now, folks, if that's not getting you appetizing already, I mean, what will at that point? That list sounds fantastic. This is looking absolutely fantastic. And you, what? Yeah, we just want to reduce that wine down, get some of that acidity uh, cooked out, and then uh, that's about what we're looking for. At this point, we add our heavy cream. You could skip the cream if you're you know, lactose intolerant, but this adds a nice little bit of richness to the sauce. Mm -hmm. You know, not everybody uses cream in their recipes, but I find that the little bit of cream just, it kind of just mellows out the acidity in the tomatoes and it just kind of pulls it all together. It gives it a different consistency. Now, because it's gonna pull out that acidity, would this be in place, because so many will actually put sugar into a sauce to take away from some of that. Is that a, one of the reasons why you're adding cream in behind it as well? Um, well, that, that's a good question because a lot of people do add sugar to their tomato sauce and mm -hmm. the reason that they're doing that is to offset some of the acidity in the yeah. tomatoes. Um, this does that, but what I try to do is buy a tomato product that is already naturally sweet. Perfect. That way you don't have to add sugar because, I, yeah, I'm a purist. I don't, I don't think that sugar should go into a savory dish. Okay, as an Irishman, I also echo what you're <laughs> saying, my friend. So for what type of tomatoes do we have then? We use a uh, imported San Marzano tomato from Italy. Okay guys, San Marzano's, again, if you guys have seen a theme, San Marzano's are what these chefs are working with and it's what you at home should be working with as well. Yeah, and that is because they're a ripe, flavorful, consistent tomato that is gonna give you um, that perfect balance of sweet and acidic. Now they're worth the extra couple dollars to be able to get that, is yes. what you're saying? Absolutely, Okay. absolutely. If you're making a marinara sauce, pomodoro sauce, marinara, I'm sorry, bolognese sauce, San Marzano, yes. all the way. Step up the game a little bit, everybody. So cream's reduced, tomatoes go in. And we have the recipe for you on the site with all of the measurements broken down. I have about, I don't know, 30 years of practice doing it, so I kind of <laughs> you got do, You know it to the T. Yeah. You got it already <laughs> down path. It's to a science at this, at this level. Yeah, I kind of tell how much of everything that we need. Now at this point, we're gonna let it simmer for a good 45 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. um, while that's simmering, there are a few other ingredients that I use to um, bring out some other flavors. One is a good imported uh, dry oregano. Okay. You could use fresh, but I kind of feel like the dry oregano is just more of the flavor profile that your palate is familiar with. Sure, that, sure. That fresh oregano is great, but it's just, it doesn't have the same flavor. Mm -hmm. And then we add a little bit of red pepper flakes. Okay. Now again, folks, if you at home do not want to add crushed red pepper flakes, you don't need to. I would be doing the same thing. Yeah. I do it in mine, so. Yeah, and again, it's just a little pinch just to give you another layer of flavor. So yeah. it just hits the other part of your palate as you're eating it. Perfect. And that's it, we'll just let that simmer away. All right, we're gonna let that simmer away while this bolognese is bubbling. We're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, how to use it for fettuccine. And first, how to layer it into lasagna, ahead on Dinner Diaz. Welcome back to Dinner Diaz. Every day, a different way to make your main meal. And today, how about it? Oh, I don't know, just the perfect pasta brought to us by Chef Matthew Zappoli, Creative Culinary Director for Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino here in Tampa. Before the break, we cooked up our beef, our pork, our veal. We added in our mirepoix of carrots, celery, and onions, and a little garlic, red wine, and cream, plus a ton of San Marzano tomatoes. Now we're gonna layer it up into a lovely lasagna. Yes, let's do it. All right. So we start by putting a little bit of a pomodoro or marinara sauce on the bottom of our vessel. Mm -hmm. If you're at home, you could obviously use like your ceramic uh, you know, casserole pan or something like that. Just something that's oven safe. So at the restaurant, we use these, these metal pans. And we start by 
adding a sheet of pasta, which we make fresh at the restaurant, but you know, you could obviously buy the dry sheets in the store, blanch them in some boiling water, and then layer the same way. We have our bolognese sauce, which I, which I bagged up to make it a little bit easier to assemble, mm -hmm. and we put a layer of the meat over the pasta sheet. Now, for someone at home that doesn't have, you know, kitchen bags like this, a, a Ziploc bag, cutting off the corner, same principle. Yeah, I mean, you could, you could spoon it, you know, mm -hmm right out of a pot or something too. I just like to spread that out so it's nice and even. I'll put a layer of Pecorino Romano. I like the Locatelli brand, if you can get the Locatelli. Right that's, that's what I always uh, use growing up. Yeah, I was my, just gonna my, say, that's something that you yeah, probably grew up with on that my one. My grandmother swore by the Locatelli, so that's what I try to use okay. when I'm doing lasagna or, or any type of Italian dish that calls for Pecorino Romano. And then that was just mozzarella cheese that you added? Yep, just some, some diced up mozzarella cheese. Then we go back with another layer of pasta sheets. Now I have a seasoned ricotta, which we at the restaurant use actually a homemade ricotta that we uh, make in house. Okay. But you can just buy like a low moisture ricotta. We mix it with a little bit of parsley some more of that Locatelli cheese, some Parmesan, some parsley, and we throw an egg in there just to keep all that moisture from seeping out as the lasagna cooks. Perfect, and folks, if you're not following us on Instagram, now's the opportunity to follow us on Instagram, at Dinner Diaz, because we've got some great bonus footage of how we actually just made that, and for you at home, and how you're gonna make it tonight. All right, so we added our ricotta cheese. We added a little bit more of that Pecorino Romano. We added a little mm. bit more mozzarella. We're gonna go with another pasta sheet and we press it down so that there's no air pockets in there and all of the ingredients kind of, you know, stretch out to the edge of the pan. Cause you wanna go bite for bite. You wanna yeah. have balance of everything. Yes. I think that's the perfect part of like lasagna is like, you know what you're going into every bite and having it just come together. Yeah, and we don't wanna have that, you know, piece on the corner there be missing any of that love and goodness. That's exactly it. Like this is, this is literally love. I mean, it's generations passed down with a dish and the ingredients that bring, you know, just humble roots to it, but in a way that's just, you know, a beauty and a science and just an art around culture and, and history. Yeah, this is, this is a dish that I grew up with. You know, every Christmas we would make it, all the big holidays, birthdays. Yeah. My mother would ask me what I want for my birthday dinner. And almost every time it would be lasagna. And to this day, she still makes a better lasagna than me, believe it or not. <laughs> well, our, our viewers are going to have to be the judge of that one yeah. because to make this for your dinner, get the recipe at our website, dinnerdias.com. Just scan the QR code in the corner of your screen. It'll take you right there. And then we've got another layer yep, of our pasta sheet coming together. One more layer of bolognese. And then we're pretty much to the top of our pan. So I'm not gonna do another layer of, of the ricotta cheese here. To finish it, what I'll do is I'll put another layer of that Pomodoro sauce on top. Okay. One more scoop. So really take advantage of the size of the pan that you're working with, but no, don't go all the way to the top for it because that last layer has got to have a lot of, you know, those final touches. Yep, and you want to get that pasta crispy on the edge, so you don't want to cover it. So that's why we're just going to do a light layer of Pomodoro, a little bit more of that Pecorino Romano, a little more of that chopped up mozzarella cheese. Oh. Fantastic. Well, you finished that up. Our lasagna is going to go into the oven. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, another way to make the most of this bolognese as we show you how to serve it with fettuccine ahead on Dinner Diaz. Welcome back to Dinner Diaz. Today, we're bringing you not just an idea for dinner, but how to make the perfect pasta with a beautiful bolognese sauce from Chef Matthew Zuppoli, Creative Culinary Director for Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Before the break, we layered up our lasagna. Now we're taking the same sauce and serving it up with fettuccine. Let's get going with this part, because these it. smells are just getting me more and more excited. 
So we have our bolognese sauce that we made earlier. That goes into a hot pan. Nice, you hear that sizzle? That's, yeah. I'll That's bring it all together. That's what we're looking for. And we add a little bit of a uh, pomodoro sauce um, at the restaurant. That gives it just another layer of flavor. Mm -hmm. And while that is heating up, we're gonna drop our pasta. That is a fresh fettuccine that we make in-house at Cipresso. Now you've got Cipresso, but you also have 14 restaurants that you oversee, and one of them is also Council Oak, is that right? Council Oak is our signature steakhouse, correct? Okay. And like, what are some of the dishes there? And look at how beautiful this dining room looks. It is a beautiful restaurant. We, uh, we're getting ready to change our menu, and we're putting on these Wagyu empanadas, which are just beautiful. It's an A5 uh, Japanese beef that mm -hmm. we fill the empanadas with. We serve it with a mole verde, some uh, cotija cheese, it has that Latin flair. But the thing that makes Council Oak what it is, is dry aged beef. We buy the highest quality USDA prime beef and we age it right there on property. I absolutely love it. There's also the res too, right? Res is our American grill. Um, we have a little bit of a southern flair to that restaurant. Okay. Also getting ready to change up that menu. Look at that beautiful, beautiful and that interior. Is, yes, that is our whole grilled yellowtail snapper. Uh, and that's served with some coconut rice, some uh, fresh tostones, and a uh, aji verde, which is a Colombian kind of like chimichurri, like if you will. Like a chimmy, yeah. Okay, so our pasta has been cooking for about, I don't know, 30 seconds, close to a minute. Now, most folks are not going to have what you have here. So walk us through what you just took the pasta out of. This uh, is actually a pasta basket or pasta strainer that is... Um, you know, it comes with our pasta cooker. Uh, in the restaurant Cipresso, we serve a lot of pasta. So we have a big pasta cooker that holds eight of these. So we could be cooking eight different pastas at the same time. See folks, it's right now, it's like that Wizard of Ozmo. We just take you back a little bit with the curtain. You see how it really is done on scale at some of the best restaurants in all of Tampa Bay. And this is a treat for all of you at home. to get to see, you know, just a little bit of that glimpse. All right, now to plate, we're gonna come over here. What I like to do is make sure that that pasta gets coated real well with the sauce. Yep. And then we do a little twirl. You have to do the we twirl. We do the twirl. You've gone through all of this to get you to a point where I've respected the ingredients, I've respected the process, I'm loving who I'm cooking this for. It, come on, take it up a notch. You could always put it onto a plate and just slop it. You don't need to. No, this we want to plate it nice finesse. Like that. It's yes, got to be sir. nice. So then we just do a little of the sauce over the top, like so. And to finish it, we sprinkle a little Parmigiano Reggiano. Okay. We don't uh, use anything other than the best imported cheese. And then we garnish with some micro basil, which we just put a few of these over the top. I love it. And, and, and you know it's going to be a part of this beautiful joy is the Kitchen Tweezers coming out to do this. That's right. To make these magnificent meals at home, all you need are the simple ingredients, plus Chef Matthew's recipe that you can find at our website where you can also watch the show over again in case you missed any of it. DinnerDiaz.com is where you need to go. Scan the QR code for the quickest way to get there. That looks absolutely fantastic. And we still have lasagna. lasagna. Yeah, lasagna wow. is ready. And there we go. Look at that. When we come back, it is the time of the day where we put down our tools, we grab our forks to taste test these beautiful ideas for dinner to make sure they've earned their place here on Dinner Diaz. Welcome back to Dinner Diaz. Today, I've been joined by Chef Matthew Zappoli. He's the creative culinary director for Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. He's been sharing how to make the perfect pasta with a beautiful bolognese sauce. We used it two ways, layered with a seasoned ricotta for the lasagna, and before the break, we added to the fettuccine. My friend, this is the time we all wait for. It's taste test time. And I'm going in right here with this beautiful, beautiful fettuccine here. A little bit of that micro basil. Come on now. Let's see what we got. Oh my God. It's rich. That cream smooths out the palate so nicely. 
wanting you to just take on so many more bites, so much more. And you know what? All right, I'm gonna. I gotta split this up with us because this, <laughs> lasagna is one of like my favorite things. I turn. I turn into like literally like Garfield on this one here, my friend. And I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna. Yeah, absolutely. Need that crispy bit. You got. That's exactly what I'm going for. I'm turning this part around. I'm going for this part right here. Yep. I'm gonna part. bring. I'm gonna bring my part over on my side here. I gotta do the same. Oh come on now. <laughs> you can never eat alone. I think that's the beauty about. An Italian meal like this is that it brings people together, it brings the family together, it brings generations, a culture, a heritage, and reverence. Because there was generations that came together to inspire you on your journey, your mother, your aunt, and who else is a part of that trifecta? Nonna, grandma. Come on now. <laughs> That's where it all starts, right? Yeah. This is something so beautiful and so special. And it was so beautiful to be able to enjoy your family's history, your journeys, your travels, all together in a dish like this. And I can't wait to have you come back again. Thanks again to Chef Matthew Zappoli. Please visit any of the 14 restaurants he oversees at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. His food is the absolute safest bet that you're gonna make when you're there. And get us recipes for what we've been making at dinnerdeals.com. Scan the QR code to find them or any of the meals that we've made on the show. I'm Jeff Philbin. Thanks for watching. See you next time with more Dinner Diaz. Anytime you're hungry for a great dinner idea, just go to dinnerdiaz.com. That's dinner, D-E-E-A-S.com. You'll find the complete recipe featured on today's show, plus a whole list of other dinner ideas.